Hi, and welcome to this Monday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. Great to have you in the conversation today. Hope you had an absolutely terrific weekend. Good to have you back with us here on this Monday. Got a lot we are going to get to today. Have three special guests coming up in the next two segments. Randall Murphy coming back from the World Congress on the Families in Australia with something kind of fascinating to share with us about how the world looks at the United States. Monica Cole from One Million Moms will be in in the next segment along with Randall Murphy to talk about a new children's program on a network called The Hub. I brought you this story last week. We're going to follow up on that with her. And then we'll have Randy Sharp on at the bottom of the hour to talk about an update on this fiasco that the Boy Scouts going pro sodomy has turned into for them. So stick around uh, for all of that. Uh, Got a couple of quick religious liberty issues before we jump into the scriptures. The Equal uh, Opportunity Employment Agency, it's a federal agency, they have compelled this trucking company that there are two guys do not want to drive trucks if they deliver alcohol products. Fine, then don't take a job with a trucking company that you know delivers alcohol as part of its business. And the EEOC, federal government, saying you have got to honor their religious scruples. You must be Sharia compliant. So they are imposing Sharia law on this trucking company. Meanwhile, we've got that florist in the Seattle area. Remember, she said she politely declined to do a floral arrangement for a homosexual wedding. And the attorney general of the state of Washington is taking her to court. So while the federal government is imposing Sharia compliant laws on everybody else, Christians continue to be in the crosshairs. An Air Force base close to my hometown of Boise, Idaho, Mountain Home Air Force Base, had a an inspirational art piece of artwork, a, a warrior with a Bible verse, Blessed are the peacemakers. Mikey Weinstein, this former Air Force guy, this radical secular fundamentalist who the Pentagon says, we have no working relationship with him. We don't know who this guy is. We hardly even are aware of his existence. We have nothing to do with him. He called to complain about this picture, and one hour later, he called the Pentagon, and an hour later, that inspirational piece of artwork was off the walls at Mountain Home Air Force Base. So that is going on on the religious liberty front. Now, in my reading in the Scriptures and pondering, finishing up in the book of Ezekiel, again, this is a prophecy that was given by God to Ezekiel after the nation had been destroyed. They'd been wasted. They had been wiped out. They had been devastated by the Babylonians. Their capital city, their whole country was in ruins. The walls of the city were in ruins. And they had been carted off to captivity in Babylon, 900 miles away from home. And there, Ezekiel receives this word from God, including a various uh, number of visions, the Valley of the Dry Bones and so forth, which indicated that if the people of Israel would turn back to him even in the time of their nation's desolation and devastation, he would return them to their former glory. It would have to be accompanied by humility. It would have to be accompanied by repentance. It would have to be accompanied by a renewed spirit of worship in the, in the heart of the people to humble themselves under the mighty hand of God, worship him, acknowledge him, obey him. And God says, if you will do that, then I will restore to you your former glory. And part of it included a rebuilt temple. Now, God had given them very precise plans for what this temple was to look like that they were to build, I believe, when they came back from Babylon. A lot of my friends believe that this temple in Ezekiel is a temple which is for the future, a temple that is going to be built during the millennial kingdom or something of that sort. I don't think that's the case. I don't think this is a temple that God would authorize to be built after the coming of Christ. His sacrifice, one sacrifice for all sins, for all time, never be another sacrifice, and yet this was a temple in which there were animal sacrifices offered. So I believe that the reason God gave this to Ezekiel is it was his way of saying to the people, look, when you get back to the land, I want you to rebuild the temple, and here's how I want you to build it. Now, the nation didn't. They didn't follow this pattern as far as we know, and I think it limited the kind of glory that God was able to restore to that rebuilt temple. But anyway, here's what happens as a consequence in Ezekiel's vision. Listen to this beautiful imagery This is what the United States has been to the world, and this is what we can be again. He brought me back to the door of the temple, and behold, water was issuing from below the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the temple faced east. So you get this picture now that under the threshold of the temple is this stream of water. In other words, under the very temple itself, under the place where God resided in the Holy of Holies, that was a spring. 
It was a spring of fresh water, and water was issuing out of this center of the nation's worship to the east. The water was flowing down from below the south end of the threshold. It was trickling out on the south side. So it starts off as just a trickle. Going on eastward, verse 3, with a measuring line in his hand, the man measured a 1,000 cubits, that's 1,500 feet, and then led me through the water, and it was ankle deep. So now after 1,500 feet, the water is up to his ankles. Again, he measured 1,000, another 1,500 feet, now 3,000 feet away, and it was knee deep. He measured off another 1,000, and it was waist deep. Again, he measured 1,000, about 6,000 feet, just a little more than a mile from the temple. It was a river that I could not pass through, for the water had risen. It was deep enough to swim in, a river that could not be passed through. And then he sees that on the bank of this river were very many trees. And where the water flows into the sea, it flows into the Dead Sea in his vision, which was brackish. I've floated in that. It's the, the, the saline concentration is so high, like the Great Salt Lake, you can float in it. But this water, when it emptied into the Dead Sea, and I've floated in it, but this water, when it empties into the Dead Sea, it freshens the water. When the water flows into the sea, the water will become fresh. So it takes the brackishness and the bitterness away and returns freshness and sweetness wherever it goes. Wherever the river goes, every living creature that swarms will live. Everything will live where the water goes. So this was a river that everywhere it went. It came from the throne of God. It came from the temple of God. It came from the place of worship of the people. Everywhere it went, it brought life. Everything will live where the river goes. And then he sees that on the banks, on both sides of the river, there will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither, nor their fruit fail, but they will bear fresh fruit every month because the water for them flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for healing. So once again, if the nation worshiped God, centered its life on the worship of the true and living God, it would be a place of prosperity. It would be a place of life. It would be a place of sweetness. It would be a place of peace. It would be a place of abundance. It would be a place of healing. Uh, and then in chapter 48, he outlines the boundaries of the, the new nation when they came back from Babylon. And he finishes Ezekiel 48 talking about the gates of the rebuilt city. And the name of the city from that time on shall be the Lord is there. And that ought to be our prayer for our nation that once again the world would say about the United States, the Lord is there. Well, let's pray. Sovereign Lord, we ask you to release the life-giving waters pictured here into our lives and into our nation. We thank you that it is your heart to bring life and to make all things new. We acknowledge that the life-giving water we seek comes only from your unseen temple in the heavens, flowing from your very presence. I pray that your river will flow into my life, the lives of my family, the listening audience of Focal Point and AFR Talk, President Obama and all of our elected officials every man, moon, and child in the United States. And I pray that this river will become deeper and stronger as we grow in you. We claim your promise that where your river flows, everything will live. Please make salt water fresh and cause the dry, barren, lifeless places in us to teem with your life. I ask you to produce your fruit in us. May we be like a tree whose leaf does not wither and serves to heal the wounded around us because it is planted by your streams of living water. May our fruit never fail because the water from your sanctuary flows to us. I pray that the fruit you produce in us may serve as food for spiritually hungry people around us. May our fruit serve as food and our leaves for healing. Through us, may the spiritually hungry be fed and the wounded healed. Amen.